Man. Got around. OG Siv back here. And today, guys, I'm going to try something a little different. I want to call this um, questions and answers with OG Silverback. <coughs> and I had to do this because um, I'm getting a lot of emails uh, from my subscribers. I'll be seeing some of your comments, ask me different questions. And um, I just want you to know that I appreciate you guys' time watching my videos. Because, dude, there's thousands of hundreds of other dudes you could be watching. So I want to give you some value for your time because time is currency, guys. So uh, I want to try this format out. You know, let me know in the comments if you like it. This is not going to be a regular thing. I'll probably do this like um, I'm thinking once a month or if you guys like it, I'll do it once a week. But it's not going to be daily because um, I'm trying to put a message out there. But before I get started, man, I wanted to say first and foremost, I want to thank, you know, the 1% of my subscribers who, you know, are part of the OG Silverback tribe, you believe in being part of a community bigger than yourself and supporting a cause bigger than yourself. Because, dude, in this life, when you pay for it, you actually pay yourself because the universe is a fair place. I wanted to thank the 1% of you. And so uh, I had asked, I had made a couple of videos asking all of my viewers and the viewer is not necessarily a subscriber, it's just a person who has taken the time either through inquisitiveness or a search for information or knowledge or looking to be entertained. They come over to your channel and they watch your content, right? So I just said to the viewers, like, hey, you know, I'm trying to really um, move up in this movie acting thing here in Vegas. And I'd really appreciate if you guys go over to the social media shows Facebook play page where they're streaming the, uh, the interview that I did of my acting coach and I said I'd really appreciate it if you guys give a thumbs up in a, in a comment like hey great job OG or good interview or I learned a lot or you know whatever right and so just so you know guys in, in, in life and in sales is what's called a conversion rate so let's just say for example I'm gonna use my channel I currently have 38,000 subscribers so in sales when I used to do IT sales it's called a conversion rate from the pipeline from your marketing pipeline so a successful conversion rate is actually 10%. So 10% of 38,000, I guess, would be 3,800. A not successful conversion rate is 1%, is which I got the feedback from you guys. I got 384 people to go over to the social media's um, Facebook page and give me a thumbs up. And, they, you know, you guys know there's an algorithm on the Internet, so... They can tell when you view a video. So the view, I saw the view count, I saw the uh, the, the thumbs up, and I saw the comments, you know, which were from uh, 385 people uh, from my YouTube channel. I want to just say I really appreciate you guys. I value your time, and thank you very much for your support. And the reason I bring that up, guys, is because, man, in this life, dude, it, it comes down to percentages and without confuse you guys we're going to talk about the Pareto principle which is 80 20 so what it means in 80 20 is like let's say 100 100 people 80 percent of those people are followers like they're lost dude they don't have a purpose in life they don't have a passion they don't know what the fuck they're here for they don't know what the fuck they're supposed to do and so they just follow trends that's why social media is just such a fucking uh, a demonic place to be because you got all these clowns on there just making people follow them because they're just looking to follow somebody. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Just follow me. But then 20% of the people are called leaders. They're the influencers, the content creators, the, the people that make decisions for the masses. And then out of that 20%, there's a 10% that really, really run things. And then there's a 1%. So follow me, guys. So... When, when the, the 1% of you that went over there, man, it shows me that you believe enough in what I'm doing and how I'm trying to be a righteous dude and change my life and no longer lie and embellish and be dishonest and just be a, a forthright dude and be transparent with my life. So you can guys can see from example of a dude that used to be a questionable dude, a prison dude, thug dude, murderer dude, dope dealer dude, deceiving dude, and now I'm all the way on the righteous side and I'm just sharing with you. Being righteous doesn't make you a soft dude, man. There's righteous warriors. If you read the book called The Four Agreements, bro, 
And I've had the fortune of, since I've been in Vegas, I've been messing around with righteous warriors, a lot of retired special forces, current special force, Navy SEALs, retired Navy SEALs, black ops, world champions, savage bodyguard bouncers, martial arts, and just murderers, bro. But you can be a righteous dude and do all that stuff. So just follow me, guys. I'm going to get to the point here, but this is a question and answer. So for those of you who don't want to be educated, illuminated, skip alone, little doggy, because I'm, you know, I'm at a point where I don't really give a fuck about little dogs anymore because I'm going to tell you guys something. One thing I learned in prison, bro. In prison, what I learned is a weak, a strong man can never make a weak man strong. What the strong man can do is show the weak man the path to strength, but the weak man has to walk it. And for the, I don't know, for the eight years I've been on YouTube, I've been trying to help young dudes and soft dudes and bitch boy dudes and panty wearing dudes, man. And now I don't give a fuck because I'm at a point in my life where I understand, dude, some dudes don't want to be, they stay saved. It's like, the reason I tell guys don't be a captain, save a hoe, bro. Hoes don't want to be saved. That's what you got to understand. Just through me associating with movie stars and producers and directors and writers and people that make commercials and actresses and models and understanding the media and how it affects people, bro. Some people have a permanent victim, victim, victimized victimhood mentality, dude. And that's why you got to be careful who you associate and align with because some people do want to always be wazzy, wazzy, woo, woo, slept rock, bro, is me and all this fucking shit, bro. I'm on Andrew Tate's side and David Goggins' side, bro, and Anthony Robbins, man. Fuck that, bro. You wake up the next day, you say, I don't want to be a bitch anymore. And how do I do that? I'm going to start associating with OG Silverback, go over to his $2 Patreon warrior and just inculcate and, um, what's the word called? Immerse myself in warrior positive mentality and then look to associate with men who resonate with that and not little wimpy bitch boy panty wearing motherfuckers, man. So anyway, man, I bring that up because, dude, um, I wanted to share this with you, what I've, what I've understood, man. Um, over here on, on YouTube, I just come to understand that the 80% the of you guys that come over here, I think you're looking to be educated and informed and looking for a different way of life. You're looking for a, a true leader, and you found one. Uh, but here's the next step, dude. Like, I found how much you guys support me because I did this thing called a premiere. So just so you guys know, I just two of my movies that I did last year finally came out. One is called Bridge of the Doom, where I had a two-minute scene toward the end of the movie as an a alpha zombie. And I'm looking to <laughs> take my zombie horde. We found a military camp. We're looking to cross the bridge and eat those motherfuckers. And they just, like, slaughter us down. So I got a cameo, man, where I'm just getting shot up, man. I just take the bullets and I fall off the bridge. And then my zombie horde follows me. And you can tell it's me because I got this. Uh, one thing that people always remember me, guys, I want to share this with you. I have what's called distinguishing characteristics. So I have what's called um, a Nephilim cone head. Like my head is really, really big, bro. And I think that as to why I'm really, really intelligent, man, I'm in tune with the universe and I can read people because I'm really, really smart. Like my cranium big. Like I think I'm part Nephilim because I they, they back in the day, for the, those of you not reading motherfuckers, man, they had these these race of people called the Coneheads, and basically they were like the they were the the, the offspring of the fallen angels, the, the those that fell from above, and took for wives from all the human women that they found to be beautiful. And the offspring were the Nephilim, dude. So if you research the Conehead Nephilims, you'll see like that's that's how you can know it's me. If you ever not sure if it's OG Silverback, if the dude's head is not big as a motherfucker, it ain't me. So anyway, what I've come to understand, dude, is like. The one percent man that really support me, I found the love when I uh, I did this I did this movie, I did these two movies. One's called Bridge of the Doom, and another one was called um, Space Wars: Search for the Deep Star or something like that. Anyway, I did a movie premiere, and I'm gonna put all the pictures for those of you who want uh, like receipts, like you always say, you silly motherfuckers. The receipts are gonna be over on my two dollar. Patreon at the warrior level. I'm going to put up all the pictures from the premiere. But anyway, um, I made a video talking about it and I set it as a premiere. Just follow me because on YouTube, when you launch a video, 
while it's rendering because YouTube looks to figure out what category to put it in and all the science behind these videos, bro. It ain't just entertainment. It's, YouTube has a YouTube has a hidden agenda, man. So anyway, it's it's on a premiere. So while the while the video is rendering up into YouTube, it sends out a premiere notice like, oh, OG Silverback's got a video coming out in 30 minutes, and it's a premiere. So when it does launch, we're launching at the same time. And I just want to share this with you guys. When the when the video launches, it look it looks like it's alive because you they they have a chat section. And I don't know how to do live streams, man, and uh, super chats and all this stuff. I don't know how to do it, but I want to share something with you, my value subscribers, who I appreciate. Dude, there was a there was a handful of dudes. I call them the one percenters, bro. They was giving me super chats, shout me out, all that during the premiere, which was only about ten minutes. But I felt the love and I felt the appreciation because we all want to be appreciated when you, you know, the one thing. And I was telling this young lady that I just dumped yesterday. You know, she, she's under assumption that just because we're intimate, bro, like, I, it's my job to fucking take her to the airport when she's leaving and shit, bro, and to pick her up when she comes. Like, get the fuck out of here. You're just like, look here, man, what we doing, bumping the nasties, bro? That's like physical exercise. It's like physical release for both of us, you know what I mean? That's, that's the agreement we have right there, whether you want to call it a fuck buddy, friends with benefits, busting your cheeks, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But for you to assume just because I'm going deep up in your viscous innards and give you multiple orgasms, like now all of a sudden I'm your fucking chauffeur. You got another fucking thing coming. And what I'm trying to say to the five women that are watching, don't misunderstand me. What I'm saying is this. Just because somebody's intimate with you, don't assume like they're at your beck and call. You can be polite about it and say, hey, you know, what you serve back, um, it would be very helpful because I don't want to drive to the airport and to pay for parking and to deal with all that. And then got to go get the shuttle from parking. And then I got to check in and all that. I, it'd be really helpful if you can find it in your heart to drop me off at the airport. I'd be greatly appreciative. And maybe we'll do some some dirty, nasty stuff we haven't done before. Like, give me some incentive. But don't, don't be like, hey, you know, I'm flying back east and my flight's leaving at 545 in the morning. And so be here at 5 o'clock to pick me up or you can spend a night. Like, get the fuck out of here, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys, bro. And, yes, this is a rant. Even though it's questions and answers, I'm going to get back on top because uh, topic because I've got notes here. Dude, that's what's wrong with America, bro. People always want to blame women and say women are the fault and women are... Women are to blame. Nah, it's the fucking men. Because a woman can't do what a man won't fucking allow her to do. And what I'm saying by that, I'm not trying to be Andrew Tate, but on what I'm saying is this. Like, check this out, guys. If you have a woman in your life and she leaves you a to-do list, like you get your bitch ass up and you get up and there's a note next to your pillow talking about, oh, babe, when you get up, can you wash the dishes and get the kids clothes out for school and then drop them off to school and then go pick up my fake nails and then go to the wig shop and get my wig and then can you drop my clothes off at the cleaners and then I needed to take out the garbage and I need you to clean up the garage. And if you do that, you must, just might get lucky. Look at my face, guys. You just like, might get lucky. Like, bitch, who the fuck do you think you are? I might get lucky. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you giving me sex is not a condition of me doing, like, being a court jester, jumping through some fucking hoops. Like, get the fuck out of here. So anyway, guys, that was part of my rant. Here's the question and answers. And it comes down to this, guys. 80% of you guys that come over here, bro, and this is not an offensive term, you're, you're followers, and I know you're a follower because you know, uh, leaders, dude, pay for what they want, bro. And I'm not going to get into this whole debate like whether I need your money or I'm, I'm desperate or whatever. It's not the point, bro. Bro, the people that I associate with, bro, I pay to associate with them, whether I'm paying dojo fees, acting school fees, movie, camera, cinematography school fees, uh, martial, martial arts fight school fees, gym fees, whatever the fuck you want to call it, bro. There's a price for excellence, bro. And what I'm saying, I want to, I want you men to understand this because I'm talking to guys from different socioeconomic levels. In this life, you get what you pay for, bro. So what I'm saying is if, if you believe in a cause enough to be garnering information and to be taken from it, it's got to be reciprocal. And all I'm saying is, bro, while I don't know how to do this whole 
monetization on YouTube. I'm getting shadow banned and they put a governor on my viewers and subscribe. They don't suggest me to people. They don't share my videos. It doesn't hurt for you guys to go to Patreon for two dollars. And it's just like, you know, it's just like when you give money to a homeless dude or to a charity, you just be like, hey, man, OG Silverback, I see you trying to do the right thing and put out positive information for people and you're trying to change your life. Man, here's $2, man. What's two fucking dollars? But what I'm saying, here's the point. It's not the money, bro. It's the intention behind the money because leaders, bro, leaders lead by example. Followers, they looking for a leader. So what I'm trying to say to 80% of you who come over here are followers, it's okay to be a follower if you're a follower to find a leader to teach you how to be a great leader. Let me say that again. It's okay to be a follower if you're looking for a good leader to teach you how to be a great leader. Because that's what's the problem with young men in America and men in America and with women. Here's how it goes, guys. Back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, they had a thing called apprenticeship programs or OJT, bro. And this is where even uh, trade schools came up. Trade schools came up because a lot of times, you know, if you had a dad in your house, he would teach you how to fix toilets, which is plumbing. He would teach you how to add an addition to the garage, which is construction. He would teach you how to fix your fucking car, change the tires, change transmission, which is called automotive technology, bro. He would teach you how to fucking plant shit because most, most dudes was farmers, man. As you know that he's teaching you how to to maintain your own food supply. He's teaching you how to hunt and fish, right? But now with the advent of welfare and and, and fucking what's it called, man? Uh, you got democracy and then you got communism. Oh, socialism, where the government gives women money just to get rid of men because I don't need no man. Well, the fucking government's a man, you fucking dumb whore. Get the fuck out of here. You switching one man for you switching one dictator for another. Except now the government is destroying your households. I don't care if you black, white, Indian, Mexican, fucking Puerto Rican, Russian. You ever notice when motherfuckers come to this country, bro, they lose their fucking culture. Yeah, they might still speak their language and they might still dress a certain way, eat certain foods, but the women become westernized, bro. They don't follow the leadership of their men who brought them over here. And then their kids become dysfunctional little fuck faces, right? Little entitled fuck faces, right? So follow me, guys. Here's what it comes down to leadership. If you're over on this channel because you're looking for a leader, you have found one because here's what makes me a leader. There's three things, guys. Number one, I got six decades on this planet, bro, and I've made my share of mistakes and I've learned what to do and most importantly what not to do. And it's called standing on the shoulders of a giant. All that means is if you have an older dude in your life and say, it can tell you, look, little poopy pants, don't go down that path because it might look like, you know what I'm saying, it's all glorious, but it's short-lived. You're going to end up in prison or in jail, bro, or your butt cheeks ripped open. Don't do it. You go, hey, man, thanks, OG. What do you think about this path, that path? Well, what I can tell you is this for sure. I don't know what's down that path, but I know for sure if you go down this path, and you get a, you go to school, get a good education, you play sports, and you do martial arts, and you stay off drugs. I know that if you go down that way, limitless opportunities will open up for you. That's one thing I do know. The rest, you got to figure it out. But you see how much drama and strife I've saved you, bro? I've saved you 60 years of pain into your little 20-year-old, 25, 30, 35, 45-year-old body, 50-year-old body, bro. Fucking, that's priceless, bro. Here's number two, bro. Dude, I came from another country. I lived in the most impoverished cities in the United States, and I rose up to the highest heights of corporate America. <laughs> you know, thanks to the German dude. Like, I've had some mentors in my life. I had a Spanish Moor dude. He, you know, he taught me some stuff about corporate. I had this big African American dude. You know, he taught me some stuff about. You know, the political game and dealing with HR policies and women at work. And then the German dude who just taught me about how to be a sophisticated gentleman and still maintain my savage. So what I'm sharing with you, dude, I've experienced all aspects of America. Being a foreigner, living in the hood, going to the military, being an athlete, and being an executive, dude. Which a lot of you guys will never experience that in your life. So I have a lot of experiences I can share with you to help you understand how to figure out your archetype. And number three, the last and most important dude is this, bro. 
I'm on the path of righteousness, dude. Like after being in the belly of the beast for 10 years, bro. And just experience the darkest of the dark, bro. Like this is something that's funny. I want to share this with you, man. I, I just had a talk with a lady I respect this morning. When I used to, um, I used to be a competitive martial artist in, in California. I had a supplement company that sponsored me. So anyway, she was one of my sponsors. And she's having some health issues. Um, I'm going to pray for you, Florence. She's having some health issues. So she, called, she reached out to me. So anyway, man, um, what I've learned is like, dude, being in the darkest demonic place, man, you know, life is extremes. There's dark and there's light. So understanding the darkness and that that's not going anywhere, but just to damnation in the hell, bro, and destruction, man, I, I'm looking to the other end of the fucking, the other end of the, of the fucking pendulum, bro. Like, I'm going to be totally righteous, dude. So you guys can call it goody two-shoes, soft, whatever, because you're an ignorant motherfucker. But I'm here to tell you, man. Righteousness, man, is the way to go. Because, dude, when you when you put out love and kindness and goodness, bro, you repel darkness and savagery. Now, I'm not saying don't be a savage beast and in touch with your inner warrior. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying look to be a righteous warrior. Because this is one thing I learned. I'm going to share this with you guys. Before I got a secret topic for this video, I'm going to share this with you guys what I've learned. And this was when I was a, a network security professional. Let me tell you what happened, guys. This was called White Hat Hackers and Black Hack. Black, black Hat Hackers. So, when you're, a, when, you, when you're a really good network security guy, for those of you who are in the IT, you're going to follow what I'm saying. When you're a good network security guy, you have to become a black hat hacker to understand how to prevent the hacking. So what I want to share with you guys, for every good in this world, there's an evil. When nuclear first came out, it was for medicine. Then they turned it into for war. You know what I'm trying to say? And it's just like on the internet. When the internet came out, it was for good. Now they turned it into bad. So I'm just sharing with you, dude. I saw the darkest of the dark. I don't want to... Anything to do with that, so I'm moving toward the light. And the reason I'm saying that to you is, um, you want to, if you're a follower, bro, you want to have a leader who's going to teach you how to be a great follower so you can live a life of exception and of happiness and passion. And that it's just filled with love and people that care about you. Your sphere of influence is a positive thing because, at the end of the day, you want to leave a legacy in this world where you're remembered for helping people, man, and, and, and doing good things for people. And that's where it comes down to the leadership, because if you are a good leader, bro, you're not going to be following some woman's emotional bullshit because she's holding sex over you like a fucking hostage, like you're a little fucking thirsty little bitch boy, mangina soft motherfucker, man. Sex with a beautiful woman is your right as a fucking man if you're on your purpose. And if you're not on your purpose, dude, You'll be living, dealing with these low vibrational women or just using you anyway. So now, man, let me get into the questions and answers, guys. So number one is uh, there was a question that a, a viewer hit me up with. And he was like, hey, OG Silverback, you know, um, I got a question for you, man. Like when you talk about your prison time in prison, you just share your victories, you know, like you was the baddest motherfucker in the whole California penal system, which is unrealistic because, you know, dudes like Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and other YouTubers, you know, Lockdown 23 and 1, After Prison Show, and everything, they talk about their losses, man, because they're human beings, and you act like you Superman. Well, first of all, I want to say this to you, and I really appreciate you <laughs> sharing that comment with me because it's very important that I address this to everybody so check this out guys I want everybody to be clear moving forward from now on these other prison youtubers are not me first of all guys I wasn't a criminal man I was just some square dude that got hooked on drugs bro and unfortunately that's why I try to tell a lot of you square dudes stop messing with drugs and drinking and driving because you're going to be a square dude thrown in with a bunch of gangsters and criminals right so I didn't have a group, a kumbaya group, whether it was the Woods or the Brothers or the Vatos or the Asians or the Samoans or the whoever the fuck to protect me so I can blend in, you know what I mean, and maybe experience some losses because once you blend in with your people, there's always some bullshit drama going on. Number two, guys, and this is the most important thing I'm going to share with you before I get into the secret topic of today's video. Bro, just like when you see the movie 300, bro. 
And it's just how life is. It's all about the actions you take, the decisions you make, the actions you take. Ever since I was a kid, the decision I made was to learn different martial arts and to fight and to train myself to be able to defeat bigger, stronger men, bro. So when I got to the penitentiary, I took all my losses on the mat and in the cage and in the boxing ring long before I even got to prison, bro. I had decades of losses. So when I got to prison, bro, I already knew the strategy. I'm like a chess player, man. So this is what happens when you get to prison, bro. There's packs of hyenas, lions, wolves, dogs, bears, kitty cats, leeches, roaches, and rats, and gorillas, right? But all, they always send a scout out just, you know, just to poke the bear, just to see if it's really a bear. And this is what I want to share with you guys. The scout that they sent out is not the baddest dude in the pack. He just want to be want to be joining he's a soft little fucking follower and he's trying he's lost trying to get in so they send him out hey man go poke the bear go poke the bear so when they poke me that's when i want to make clear to you guys when they send a soft dude to poke me bro and i don't know if you ever watched this in movies or on, in, on videos or the discovery channel i took my bear claw man and i smacked the fucking shit out of his face and let me tell you something if a bear smacks your face bro you're dead because the claws, bro. Bear claws go through steel, bro. They go through bone and metal and meat. I slap the dude so fucking hard, metaphorically. Whether I do a judo flip, bro, or a, 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 a Japanese jiu-jitsu, breaking his arm and his shoulders and his face. Whatever I do, I do it so horrendously, bro. That's the end of that fucking test because I pass all my tests. And that's why I don't have losses. So anyway, man, I think I did enough of a question and answer rant. For those of you who stuck around, you you big thinkers, you guys who want to be great leaders, I got a banger for you today. The topic of today's video is the men in maximum security prison don't fear the boogeyman because he is a boondy bandit and they are pillow biters. So I want to share this to you, man. I want to share this with you guys, man, because uh, this is to you square dudes, and this is just going to be a short message because I left the, it's like a balloon interest payment. I left the best at the end. I want to share this with you square people, and I want you to understand this, man, and I want you to resonate this for the rest of your life. The number one reason that prison is overcrowded in most states, and especially the United States, the United States has the largest prison population out of any civilized nation. And never the reason being, bro, our forefathers were derelicts and perverts and deviants that were let out, let out of the fucking English prisons and Spanish prisons, bro. Our research this country, our forefathers were derelicts and perverts. The reason I'm telling you that... The reason that the prison population is overburdened in America is because most of the guys in prison are gay, dude. And here's what I want to tell you that you guys don't understand. Hey, holy shit, man, you always say to me, I'm going to tell you, say to me, I'm up something, man, fuck you, I'm out of here. Hey, man, skip along because you're going to stay lost because you, you guys are from a lost generation. They talk about you in the Bible, in the Quran, in the book. You're lost because you don't understand how to listen when the old dude is laying you down some life lessons, bro. I ain't 20 years old, bro. And I ain't 30, I ain't 40, I'm 60, bro. That's three lifetimes I've lived, bro. And here's what you got to understand. Let's just take you square people. Let's say you're a square dude like me. And let's just take my friend. He, you know, a lot of guys in the military, they have alcohol problems because, you know, they're law-abiding citizens and they don't want to do drugs like heroin, cocaine, crystal meth, fentanyl, whatever the new drugs are. Because in, in the military, you get your, you get your analysis, you get random urinalysis tests, especially if they suspect you of being on drugs. But you can, you can drink. There's, um, there's NCO clubs on base, enlisted clubs. There's nightclubs on base. There's liquor stores. You can drink as much as you want, and it's acceptable. But here's the problem. While it's acceptable on base, let's say you get really, really pissy drunk, and you know you do a vehicular manslaughter. And if you got a good record in the military, bro, and you, you've been to combat and you're a good upstanding soldier and a person, you could do a vehicular manslaughter. I just want to be honest with you. I know some guys that did a vehicular manslaughter, and uh, they ended up just getting like 15 years. No, so that's 15. So in 15 years, with good time, you're going to do seven. So just follow me. I'm talking about California. 
So let's say you had an alcohol problem, bro. You just like to drink because, you know, you got PTSD. You've been in combat and drinking is the only thing that dulls the nightmares that you have from just seeing slaughter and the debased level that human beings will go to in, in combat. You see some, you see the base human nature at its, at its lowest, bro. We're all animals. So let's say, man, you, you get a vehicular manslaughter. You're in maximum security prison with lifers, booty bandits, bro undercover gay dudes dudes that are that are gay curious man but now in prison their families aren't around to judge them so they they do it in their cells at night because nobody can see they just don't oh just be quiet just let's do it quiet ah, like that right so you get to see all of that and you get to say one thing wow OG silverback wasn't lying hey man this ain't for me man and so you you know you're a righteous dude, man. You're a military dude. You 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 decorated, man. Been to war. You know what I mean? You got a wife and kids, bro. And let's just say you get lucky. You get these conjugal visits, which your wife can come visit you. I think it's every three months. You can have sex with your wife. So you don't have a reason to mess with homosexuals, right? None at all. And you're not a gang member, you know. So let's say you join the, the Christians or the, or the Muslims. So you're protected. Because in prison, in California prison at least, if you join the... Religious gangs, you're protected. You know, they give you a pass. It's, but the rigid religions are gangs too. So let's just say you join the Christians and you walk around the Bible and you become a pastor in there. So you just a righteous dude. You're not messing with homosexual, right? Let me share this with you, square people. The amount of sodomy and profanity and gayness and just the fucking brutality of butt cheeks that you see in prison. One thing I know for sure, you will never, ever, 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 ever drink and drive again bro you don't give a fuck you gotta join alcoholics anonymous take these pills that make you sick when you drink alcohol whatever you gotta do get your liver spleen removed you will never ever 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 drink alcohol again why because you don't want to fall off the wagon get in the car which is part of your parole violation it's part of your parole conditions if you are caught in a car with alcohol on your breath, you're going back to prison. You will never, ever, 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 ever drink again. Why? Because you're not gay. I don't have anything against gay people, but this straight white dude who's got a very hot wife and some really cool little blonde kids, bro, he wants to be there in, in their life. Like, you know, he missed the first seven years of her life, so he comes out. Now they're seven and ten. He can still make an impact because he cares about his offspring. He will never, ever, 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 ever drink again. Why? Because he don't want to accidentally take the car keys. Hey, babe, I'm going to go get some milk. And even if he's not drunk, if they pull him over on parole, they fuck with you a lot. Hey, man, breathe into his breathalyzer. <sighs> you got point zero 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 point one percent which means you drank a beer two weeks ago, and then when you burped, it came out. But we locking your bitch ass up. He will never do it. So let's go to the other extreme for you people to be like, Oh, would you step back? You understand, man? Some guys from the hood. Hey, homes. Some people from the Vadio homes. Hey, my man. Some people's from Trailer Parks. And we, we just living in that. We living in the slums. You don't understand. This is what I do fucking understand. I fucking understand. Because when I got out of prison, I was homeless. Living in a homeless shelter. Living under fucking neath the bridge. And I seen the programs available, bro. There's programs, bro. When you guys want to feel sorry for homeless people and gang members, dude, and, and repeat offenders, get the fuck out of here. They choose that life because they want to get butt raped in prison. Excuse me, YouTube. They want a baloney pony deep up in their butt so they can feel their colon expanding. So let's go to the other extreme. Let's just say you're a gang member. I don't give a fuck. you Crip, Blood, Serino, Norteño, the AB, dude, KKK, Hells Angels, whatever. You're a badass motherfucker. Hey, I'm from the hood, and I represent my hood. I represent my hood. Everything I do, I do it for my hood. Everything you think you do it for your hood. It's understood. It's all that, baby. It's good, right? Here's what I want to share with you, bro. If you're not fucking gay, like if you really like women fatties with the fat ass and smacking that shit, pulling the air, pulling the hair, they're talking about, oh, big daddy, and all that. You're talking about swallow it, bitch, and all that. Slapping her with your baloney pony. You into that, really? 
The first time, man, you do like a drive-by shooting for your homies or you get involved in a drug deal like me, you smoke somebody and they give you an involuntary manslaughter. So let's just follow. Let's give you the same deal. You got 15 years because it was involuntary manslaughter because, you know, you got a good lawyer and he's saying that she was a junkie like me. So it wasn't really a drug deal. It was just abusing the wrong place at the wrong time. Follow me, square dudes. Follow me, gangster dudes. I'm talking to the young dudes now because you motherfuckers need to get your head around this. So this is your first time going to the Pinta, Holmes, right? No, Holmes, you got your stripes now, Holmes, because I'm going to tell you something about gang members, bro. You don't really earn your stripes till you go to the pen, Holmes, for your body, Holmes. That's when you really earn your stripes. You rise up to the ranks and become an El Sargente, El Lieutenante, and maybe a General El Capitan. That's when you rise in the ranks because now, bro, you... You penitentiary tested. So check this out. This is your first time, and you end up in maximum security prison. And you see how your homies, just from your same hood, because there's a lot of them in there, you see how your homies be having gay dudes, and they sell. See, this is the whole thing, bro. This is how I got to have my own cell a lot of times, bro. I'm what's called an other. So when they would go, to, when, they, when, they, when my cell opened up, and they go to put a white dude in there, he tell the guard, man, like, nah, I, I can't bunk with dude, man. Like, I can't bunk with dude. He looked like a big black dude. I can't bunk with dude. So he go back to the hole until another cell opens up, and he just tells them, oh, I'm a, I'm an AB. I want to only bank with A. I want only bunk up with ABs, right? So follow this. Then a Sereno, they bring him from classification to my cell because I'm a other, and he looks in there. He's like, hey Holmes, I can't rock with that Vato Holmes. He looks like an El Negro Mayate Holmes. I don't, I don't fuck with those people, Holmes. They take him back to the hole, and then he goes, hey, Holmes, I'm a Sereno, Holmes. I only want to bunk with a Sereno. Follow me. So then they bring a big black dude to my cell, because I look like a big black dude. And he comes in the cell, man. And the first thing I tell him, man, like, hey, homie, what's you, like, what's you, what you representing, Holmes? Hey, Holmes, I'm a blood, Holmes, representing. I'm a Crip, Holmes. Or I'm a BGF, Holmes, or whatever. I'm a up north, brother. I'm a Bay Area, brother. I'm saying, well, I'm going to tell you like this, bro. I ain't with none of that shit, so while we fucking sell these, we ain't got shit to say to each other, motherfucker. Don't even look at me, motherfucker. Don't even speak to me, motherfucker. And when I'm doing my martial arts, if you get in my way, I will fuck you up. And if there's a problem, we can handle it now. And sometimes we handle it then, because everybody everybody ain't soft, homie. But don't matter whether we handle it then or dude be like, oh, okay, my man, most dudes look at me and they be like, because I'm savage, bro. Like, you motherfucking <laughs> cell soldier keyboard warriors be talking shit to me. Ain't none of you got the cojones to come and meet me in person. I ain't talking about like we gotta we gotta kill each other. I'm just talking about meet me because I got a I got a thing on my Patreon. It's the OG Silverback meet and greet for three hundred dollars. You can just meet me, man, and you can get this fucking see look in my eye, homie. I, I do this shit. So let's say the dude don't want to do battle because I'll smoke his bitch ass. Then next day he put him for a cell change. Like, hey man, I can't I can't live with that dude. He's a weird dude, right? All I'm saying is, bro, you control who comes in your cell. So here you are, young Vato or young homie or young Wood. You start seeing dudes from your neighborhood that you respect, shot callers, the big homies. And they got flaming gay dudes in their cell. And that night, you be hearing, oh, beep, beep, oh, fuck, oh, yeah, oh, God, yeah. Go up in me, big daddy. Oh, you like. And then you come to a realization, like, man, you know what? Hey, man, that OG Silverback dude, man, he was telling the fucking truth, man. And these motherfuckers is lying, so just follow me. Maybe for your seven years, because you got to survive in there, maybe you'll put in work or maybe you'll, you, you'll, you'll, you'll pass drugs or whatever because you got you to gotta represent the hood with the homies, right? You got to put in work, Holmes, whatever work you got to do. And then when they offer you some of that gay culo, you'd be like, hey, Holmes, you know, man, like uh, my highness coming on my visit, Holmes. And she can tell if my pito is not Largo, home. She can tell if I've been up in somebody's culo, home. So I'm cool for right now, Vato. You know, maybe later, you know, you're playing the pass-off game, right? I guarantee you one thing, little Vato, little little poopy pants, little wood dude, little fucking Asian dude, right? Little fucking Simone dude. I guarantee you one fucking thing. And you square dudes, listen to me. When the fuck you get the fuck up out of there, bro? They got programs, bro, where you can relocate to a whole nother fucking city, bro. There's a thing called, when you want to come out of a gang, I think it's called decommission, bro. 
And you just tell your people, you tell your family members, like, hey, the fucking shit I seen in prison, I ain't built for that gay to fucking Sodom and Gomorrah butt fuck fat shit. I'm out of here. So that's how you know, bro, this video right here. The men in maximum security prison, they don't fear the boogeyman, bro. Because they know he's a booty bandit and they are pillow biters, bro. That's why the booty band is broke and still exists, man. I don't give a fuck what nobody's telling you, bro. Why is it the number... Look here, guys. Why are most men afraid to go to prison? Like, let's just take a minute. I'm going to calm down for you soft motherfuckers. Why is it that most men are afraid to go to prison? Come on, man. You mean to tell me out of the whole United States, out of all the 52 states, 54 states, whatever the fuck it is, you mean I'm the only savage... I'm the only savage built motherfucker. I, I ain't afraid to go to prison, bro. I don't want to go to prison because I love women, bro. I love being able to travel, bro. I don't like little bitch boys being able to tell me. I'm talking about correctional officers and what. I don't like soft motherfuckers telling me what to do. That's why I stay out of prison. But let me let me ask you this: Why is it, dude? People are afraid to go to prison. Oh, here's what you're going to say. Oh, gee, don't nobody want to be confined up like an animal. Man, get the fuck out of here, bro. Time out is some good shit, bro. Solitary is good, bro. That's why you got the great leaders, Buddhist monks. Any any holy book, they tell you dude went out into a cave for 40 days and 40 nights, bro, to find himself, bro. Solitude is how you build character, bro. You mean you're afraid to be locked up? The fuck out of here. The number one reason that men are afraid to go to prison, bro. Because they understand there's a lot of buffoonery, no, but foonery going on. And they're afraid of the butt foonery going up in their butts. And that's why they don't want to go to prison. But the rest of these prison channels, you little soft motherfuckers coming over here talking about, oh, you sit back, you gay, you talk about too much booty and all that. That's because you ain't never fucking been nowhere, homie. And by the time you go to the belly of the beast, maximum security prison and you in the belly of the beast like jonah was in the well you're going to realize man the reason that most of the dudes keep coming back to prison is because they're not afraid of the boogeyman because he's a booty bandit and he has them in the cell with their face in the pillow and their butt in the air going hey hey 